Welcome, my name is Peng Wu. I support the PyTorch compiler team. On March 15th, 2023, we announced PyTorch 2.0, a step function change to PyTorch performance via this new mode called the graph mode. The most remarkable aspect of PyTorch 2.0 is that we are able to offer graph mode without sacrificing the ease of use UX that made PyTorch successful in the first place. I want you to bookmark two phrases, graph mode and ease of use. It was long believed by the industry that machine learning frameworks cannot have both graph mode and ease of use. PT 2.0 actually challenged that conventional wisdom. So in today's talk, I'm going to tell the story of PT2's unique graph mode and essentially how could we have the cake and eat it too. But before we jump into 2.0, let's talk about PyTorch 1.0 first. So 1.0 was announced about five years ago. And to give a little bit of a historic context, at the time, the whole industry of machine learning frameworks are mostly embracing and designing around graph mode. It was believed that graph modes allow compiler optimizations so could potentially provide better performance. But the catch of graph mode is that it requires the developer to think in graphs. And this is really counterintuitive, hard to express, and even harder to debug. So 1.0 at the time made a bold bet. We decided to value ease of use above everything else, including graph mode. So PyTorch 1.0 boldly chose to embrace non-graph mode. We call it eager mode, with the intention to quickly draw adoption from researchers. So this bet paid off. Two and a half years after the 1.0 release, PyTorch reached 50% adoption, making it number one machine learning frameworks used by researchers. And after that period, we still see healthy year-to-year -year growth to date. So today, PyTorch is the de facto training engine for most of the most advanced ML models out there. So if the story of 1.0 is about making a strategic bet of using ease of use to attract research adoption, then 2.0 came into being by pure technical innovation. So in PyTorch 2.0, we introduced this torch.compile API as the primary graph mode API. It's very easy to use. You program as if in the eager mode, and you just need this one-liner torch.compile decorator to your code. And then the graph engine would kick into place behind the scenes. And this graph engine would be able to offer out-of-box performance boost from 30% on average to 70% on average over a wide range of OSS models. So essentially, we did have the cake and ate it too. You may wonder, why do we make such a fuss about PyTorch graph mode? It is because what made PyTorch beloved, its flexibility and dynamism, is exactly what made it hard to compile. So the moment we figure out how to have graph mode while maintaining the ease of use API, we know that a step function change is happening on PyTorch. And that moment is Torch Dynamo. Torch Dynamo solved a long-standing problem in PyTorch graph capture. In fact, this is not our first attempt. We have offered several generations of graph capture techniques for PyTorch all of which requires significant manual effort. The solutions ranges from capturing correct graphs, but some of the graphs require human intervention to make the graphs capturable on the one spectrum or on the other spectrum. You can always capture a graph, but the graph may not be correct. Dynamo solved both issues. To give you some intuition, there are two key insights. To make graphs always capturable, 
then we'll let go of the requirement of always capturing whole graph. Instead, we capture partial graphs. So basically, we will stop graph capture if we encounter something that Dynamo does not recognize and fall back to eager and then resume capturing graphs when we reach a region that we recognize. To solve the second problem about capturing a graph that is not correct for the execution, Dynamo introduced guards that would be validated at the runtime. And of course, if guard fails, we have the ability to recapture graphs just in time. So essentially, these three key designs, partial guarded graphs with just-in-time recompilation is what made Torch Dynamo both sound and out of box. Just to give you an example from the previous code fragment we showed, so this example, there is a deliberately introduced graph break in the if statement. So to the right-hand side, we're printing out the graphs. So there are actually three graphs that's highlighted in the color bar. And this is actually by design. This is exactly what made Torch Dynamo operating completely transparently from end users. So I just want to give you a glimpse of the magic behind Torch Dynamo. To the left-hand side is the normal C Python interpreter. This is what's going to happen when you execute in eager mode. To the right-hand side is the contraption built by Torch Dynamo. A few things I want to highlight. Number one is Dynamo solution is built on top of a standard Python using standard feature called PEP 5.23. And the second part I want to highlight is that all the added box transparently handle the things we talked about before, such as graph picture, graph breaks, guard, validation of guards, and recapture at runtime compiling code and executing it fall back to eager. So a lot of these complexity are completely handled seamlessly by Torch Dynamo execution engine. So Dynamo solved the graph capture problem, but keep in mind that capturing graphs do not necessarily actually do not improve performance. So this is where Torch Inductor came into play. Torch Inductor is a PyTorch native optimizing compiler, and it's the true magic behind the 2.0 performance. It is also one of the few training compilers out there for PyTorch, but by far the offers the best out-of-box performance and cover the most models. I do not have enough time to go into details of Inductor, but if there is only one thing that I'm allowed to highlight, it is the unique IR design of Torch Inductor. So Inductor is designed to handle real models. That meant from the very beginning, we designed the IR to handle the very tricky cases of PyTorch semantics, including the large opt surface, the mutation semantics, and dynamic shape. And all of these contributed to Inductor being the best performing training compiler for PyTorch and for the best coverage for PyTorch models as well. Just to wrap up, this picture summarizes the journey from 1.0 to 2.0. Five years ago, 1.0 surprised the industry by fully embracing non-graph mode execution, which we called eager, with the intention of quickly attracting adoption from researchers and led us to be the number one machine learning framework. Today, 2.0 surprised the industry again by introducing this special graph mode under the hood without sacrificing the ease of use UX that makes 1.0 successful. Behind the 2.0 technology are two really cool innovations. The first one is Torch Dynamo. This out of box graph capture opened the pathway from eager mode to graph mode so that most PyTorch models can seamlessly transition to graph mode without any human effort. Once we open that pathway, the second key technology is the optimizing compiler, Torch Inductor. And to date, Inductor is the best performing training compiler for PyTorch and also covers the most PyTorch semantics and handles all the tricky semantics of PyTorch. So today, 
you can already use PyTorch it, as it's been released. And since March, we have seen countless user testimonies of 2.0 by adding this simple one-liner of Torchlight Compile, improving their performance from 30% to 2x. We have also seen our partners, vendors, embracing the PT2 stack by integrating their backend compiler into the P2 stack. So going forward, the short-term um, focus of 2.0 is to continue to improve performance. We do believe that the 2.0 release and the impressive number we, we just showed before is actually the starting point of the 2.0 journey in terms of PyTorch entering graph mode. There is still a lot on the table. And the second part we want to improve is to improve interoperability between 2.0 and other core features of PyTorch. There are still some of the features that we have not got the chance to make to work with 2.0. And we don't want users to choose between these core features and 2.0. And keep in mind that graph mode really has a lot of possibilities. So in terms of our longer term goal, roughly, a year mark or beyond, we do see that there are two huge venues that we need to invest in. Number one is distributed compiler. Because today's training workloads are increasingly large and distributed is an indispensable aspect of training as well as for inference. So with distributed compiler, we would be able to optimize both compute and communication. And the second important major feature is PyTorch export. And this feature would speed up the transition from PyTorch from research production and would allow 2.0 to be used in many of the production use cases, both in training and inference. So if you're excited about the 2.0 story, I would invite you to try out Torch I'll Compile and give us feedback. And if you are a PyTorch developer or a compiler developer, I would invite you to participate in the community and continue to make PyTorch the number one machine learning framework in the world. Thank you.